Dolphin Elves. Well, Merriam has figured out a way to win the first game here. He's playing against Cody Shoemaker, who is playing Miracles. Definitely an interesting matchup, to be sure. There are some things that are very scary for Merriam to try to beat. Counterbalance Sensei's Vying Top certainly being one of them, and Dylan Click being another. But as Antics Warm in play right now does make things a little bit interesting as Merriam is resolving a brainstorm. I think this matchup is better for Storm than most people think. Yes, if they establish a quick Divine Top plus Counterbalance, you're in a lot of trouble, but they need to find it really quickly, and they have a ton of nonsense in their deck. See Rush struggling to resolve a Brainstorm at this point. A lot to think about, of course, with Brainstorm. And the card he hasn't cast for some time, honestly, you think about it. He's been playing Elves for, what, about two years at this point? And that's not a Brainstorm deck. Yeah, it's Elvis Visionary. It's They're a little different. Potato and potato. They're, they're a little different. <laughs> two Lion's Eye Diamonds now, like a Taxi Probe being cast. And it looks like with the Taxi Probe on the stack, Merriam is going to break those Lion's Eye Diamonds, so he's going to lose a Grim Tutor, and a Brainstorm. But he's going to have some mana floating, and then Probe will draw him a card. Now, keep in mind, it looks like all of Ross's spells are uncounterable because Xantid Swarm did attack already. You'll see Shoemaker's hand. He's got a Snapcaster Mage, a Ponder. It looks like a Dillion Click and an Island. Shields are down. Yeah. Whatever Ross had on top of his deck should be good to go. And if you if he kept with Brainstorm here, you have to imagine he has a kill. Well, he's got an Infernal Tutor off the top of the deck. And so now he's going to go hunting. So many spells he's cast, so perhaps it's time for a Nauseam. And it is. Going to try to get a little lucky. 16 life. It appears as though he has not made a land drop yet. This is not a bad base to go off of. Though, two Lion's Eye Diamonds in the graveyard. That's normally an important card when you're going off in this situation. Yep, I mean, it's by no means a lock, but uh, I don't mind picking this spot. Well, let's do a little countdown here. Pluto Delta will be zero. Dark Ritual will be 1, down to 15, down to 13 from Cabal Ritual, down to 12 from Brainstorm, down to 11 from Gataxian Probe, down to 9 from Cabal Ritual, down to 8 from Carpet of Flowers. Let's make it 6 from a third Cabal Ritual. Let's make it 5 from a Duress. How low can you go? It's a lot of mana to work with. By the looks of his graveyard, I don't think it amounts to a kill, though. He could really use a Lotus Petal, because another bottleneck he's going to encounter here is a lack of uh, colored mana besides black. Merriam looks like he's going to go a little bit deeper after thinking things through. Four from a Dark Ritual. And four is a sweet spot here, because Tentrals of Agony, Passing the Flames, Battle in the game. Yeah, he now has whammies in the deck. Yeah. And he will stop right there. So that now is done resolving. Miriam is at four. We do not believe he has played a land yet this turn. So it looks like he has a fetch land and scalding turn to play, but that'll bring him down to three. The tax him, bro, if he wants to alternate cast, it'll bring him down to one. So his life total is certainly under duress at this point as well. There is the Tarn. And it isn't as simple to say, well, I'll, I'll do what I can this turn and then try to go for it in subsequent turns because Cody's hand can beat down. Yeah. It was a Vendillion click at a Zapcaster Mage there, so. Sometimes Storm can get into spots where it can't win when it ad nauseums, but it can say, all right, I'll just go for it. I'll build up the hand I can go for it next turn. Man, I'm going to sacrifice the Scalding Tarn, get himself. An underground C. Down to three. So I suppose Ross can still do next turn, as he's not in any immediate threat of dying, but it means you know he's gonna get clicked. He'll lose a card potentially. It looks like it's gonna be time for a duress. Now this is interesting because by casting duress this turn. To me, what he's saying is I'm going to play another turn of this game. Exactly. He's gonna load up. He didn't have a kill. He's going to try to load up and be able to go off through the Vendillion Click or Snapcaster on Pyroblast next turn. And this is a difficult skill with this deck of playing at Nauseam, going down at three, sculpting a hand and saying, you know what, I'll try to go off again next turn. Not easy to do. But, you know, it seems he's got a reasonable shot at next turn. He has access to a lot of blue mana through his lands, so he gets a lot of cantrips. Mana will not be an issue. I mean, yeah. Ross has got uh, more than enough mana to work with. And those cantrips represent a lot of shots at whatever he's missing, an Infernal Tutor, a Lion's Eye Diamond, a Pass in Flames, whatever. 
He's so happy with how much mana he has, he's discarding Cabal Rituals. Yes. And those are Cabal Rituals that will have threshold. So he has plenty of mana. That's not the bottleneck, as you mentioned. It's just getting the game over with. That's the big question. And Shoemaker's going to sacrifice Herod Mesa on his upkeep and get a Volcanic Island out of his deck. But with Xanthid Swarm and in play and no counter spells in Cody's hand, no creature removal. Ross is probably going to have a green light to just go for it next turn, with the exception of Vendillion Cloak stripping a resource. So we'll see what Shoemaker can put together here. You know, he's got to imagine he's in some trouble. And I believe Zandit Swarm is an attack trigger. It's not a deal damage trigger. It is an attack trigger, yes. So uh, even if Cody draws a counter spell, the Vendalian click does not allow him to circumvent the Xanthid Swarm trigger. A little spinning on the top. I guess deal combat damage would be a weird trigger on a zero power creature, but whatever. The point is that the Vendalian click doesn't defend this. From a game design standpoint, that would be, be a little, that'd be a little strange. If you pump your guy and then hit them, yeah. then they can't counter anything. Yeah, what do you think about that? <laughs> that's just good deck building. So, all right, that's, that's pretty narrow, yeah. but OK. Oh, Mary draws a card for the turn. It's another land there. It looks like a Scalding Tarn. Brainstorm in hand, among other options. And now this is a Brainstorm. Three cards potentially going to come here. Now, what's interesting, too, is that Miriam is making this play before attacking. Yes. Not after. Well, if Cody uses a counter spell here, it means he no longer has the mana left over to do anything with the Vanillion click. Mm -hmm. It is a little weird if Cody draws Force of Will, as it means that he can Force of Will pass the, pass the Snapcaster Mage and still have access to Vendillion click. Brainstorm going to resolve among the cards found there for Miriam, Lion's Eye Diamond. And this is going to be interesting to watch because Miriam, a very accomplished player, as we all know, number four on our season one leaderboard here for 2015. But a lot of the damage that he has done in the Open Series, especially in Legacy, has been with Elves. And the yep. mechanics of that deck are very different than the mechanics of this deck. The, the, the decks in Legacy are really hard to play across the board. And uh, even though, you know, magic is magic to some degree, there's nuances and wrinkles and line of the play available to all decks that you don't really notice until you have a sufficient amount of reps in, so. I mean, Ross's mechanics with Elves, for example, are significantly faster than, you know, I've never seen him contemplate a decision this long at all ever with Elves. Yeah. He's just so well versed in the deck. And, you know, this Brainstorm here has probably more permutations than the average Elves play, but it's still, uh, does have something to do with familiarity. Well, it does beg the question of how many times have you played against Vendillion Click, mana open, and you know your opponent has in hand when you're playing Storm. Exactly. It's, and, you know, the expert Storm players know the ways to maneuver around this sort of situation. But I, I imagine if we were watching Brian Cook, for example, this would be elementary for him. Yeah, he's seen this before. Yeah. And for Ross playing a brand new deck, we don't know if just for this tournament or perhaps just for 2015 to expand his range a little bit. It's very clear what Shoemaker does have. He has access to Snapcaster Mage, which can flash back something, be it a Pyro Blaster or Brainstorm, or Vendillion Click. Those are his options right now, and Miriam's got to worry about those and see if he can beat it. And he's going to play another spell here and ponder. And again, he has not attacked with Xanthid Swarm yet. That's the big one. Ross might be just trying to bait Cody and the Snapcaster Mage. And don't forget, this defending player can't play spells. You know, it's not that your spells can't be counter anything. They can't do anything. Ross might be trying to trap here. Ross yeah. might just be saying, if Cody goes ahead and Snapcaster or Pyroblasts any of these blue spells, I can kill him with the leftovers. But the click's a lot more complicated to win through, for sure. So Ponder's unresolving. Also, the, the, other th the other issue at this point might be Ross saying, well, I don't know if I can win through Click this turn, so I have to leave the Xantus Swarm back on defense because I die to a Vendillion Click attack. So there's a lot of possibilities for, to justify Ross's line of play right now. Well, the Swarm does fly, after all. Yeah. So it can block that Vendillion Click, as you did mention. 
now Merriam looks like he might be casting a carpet of flowers, and he is. The other issue or two, oddly enough, is you take a look at the texture of Ross's hand, and there's not exactly a wind condition hanging out over there. So that could be the other, you know, kind of bottleneck or the hiccup here. There's a lion's eye diamond. It's very interesting. Is is he making a move? Is he not making a move? Yeah, there's a, a weird sort of cat and mouse thing going on here. And now here comes Antid Swarm. So you see Miriam's hand. He does have a copy of Kataxian Probe there. Carpet of Flowers came down in main phase one, so it'll trigger in main phase two. We know this because Carpet of Flowers says during your main phase. Yes. So it's whenever you want. Yeah, it's very clear <laughs> and concise on what that card does. Now here's some Dillian Clay. And Ross is going to show him a hand here. And you see two Dark Rituals, a Cabal Ritual, Scalding Tarn, and the most important of the bunch, the Taxi and Probe. So I think that Ross is saying, essentially, I hope that the Mystery card on top of my deck, which he gets either through the Click Trigger or from the Taxi and Probe, represents a kill. Yep. Carpet of Flowers is going to get four mana. Now Ross is going to play a Dark Ritual. Here's another dark. I mean, he's certainly up to something. And it could just be I need the mystery card on top of my deck to be good. Now, there is Gataxian Probe. Because <laughs> he's done a lot of work to set this up. So, all right. Oh! <laughs> <That's the thing. laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> he's going to get the job done. Ross Mayer, I'm going to win yep. this match here. Beautiful stuff. Over Cody Shoemaker, two games to zero. He's got a smile on his face as he tendrils for lethal to move on to 3-0. Got here. it all set up with the brainstorm. Yep. Maneuvered very well.